Hey everyone, this is Jesse with the Oh My Geek Podcast. A quick note about the episode you're about to hear. During it, you're going to hear me announce an appearance happening at Los Angeles Comic Con on October the 12th. Well, October the 12th has already passed, and unfortunately, we weren't able to get this episode up in time. So, disregard that, just enjoy the silliness during the episode, and we'll talk more about what happened at Los Angeles Comic Con in the next episode, and you will also hear that appearance in an upcoming episode as well. All right, so now sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the Oh My Geek Podcast. Thanks, everybody. the audience can see the dancing that's going on in the room i always do it to try to break you guys <laughs> but then this guy does it too and i'm okay i'm not gonna break him but i still try to break you though jesse thanks yeah. it never happens but i try well it happens every now and then i was like yeah it ha- on occasion you. every now but, and then but my batting average is pretty low here <laughs> aww oh just like tonight's game that wasn't a pun so i just was, couldn't think of a better i was gonna say that i was trying not to do that <laughs> wah, wah. You say just like your a's what I meant was, oh, not that. I forgot the pause. Oh, he misses one Psych week and mind. he misses one week and he foobars the whole Cats and show. dogs living together, complete oh, anarchy. Guess right. I'm not the only one with a low batting average. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. <laughs> Things happen. Ah. Uh, uh, Hi guys, hello, howdy, 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 howdy. Oh boy, so what you doing? Nothing, just chilling. Mongo just pawned and gave him life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blazing Saddles. Have you seen Blazing Saddles? I have. I own it. Okay, it's been a long time. Okay, but, but you've I, seen it. I have a actually like a twelve like movie Mel Brooks collection. It's got everything yeah. except for Spaceballs for some reason. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll yeah. accept that. I'll allow it. Yeah, but it's got everything from like silent movie to like Dracula Dead and Loving It. Just no Spaceballs. <laughs> so That's it has no Spaceballs, but has Dracula Dead and Loving It. Yep. I know. I know. Jeez. But it doesn't matter because I have space balls on Blu-ray anyway. Okay, so, yeah. all right, that's fine for the audience so that they understand what we're talking about. Is we've had a very long, we'll say, lively discussion <laughs> before recording yeah. about all the movies that you have not seen, yes, and those that you have seen, yes, numerous times. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Maybe we'll get into it later. Yes, we should. We should. Oh, it's like therapy. <laughs> For who? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> For somebody. If 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 my messed up life can help somebody, then I, I don't know where I'm going with this. But I that's not either. the point. If I can yell at the top of my lungs at him, then I'll be, <laughs> I'll be just fine. <laughs> Such catharsis. <laughs> uh, I will start charging people for therapy sessions. It'll be a nickel. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need Peanuts music on here now. Yeah. Oh well. Do 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 do. Yeah, doo. no, that doesn't work. <laughs> so how's your weekend, dudes? Yeah, I, I guess I yeah. I don't really remember it. Um, no. Sometimes those are the best ones. No, nah, not 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 this time. It's just one of those uneventful weekends where oh. it's just kind of like okay. Yeah, you know, I watched some movies. Uh, you know, watched some sports. Played some video games. Did you watch and... movies at home or did you go out to see a movie? I watched movies at home. Oh, okay. There's nothing worth seeing right now in theaters. I tried though. I, I Sunday I was like, let's go watch a movie, and I looked at the a Fandango. How about no? No, not this weekend because there's even I don't want to see the new Rambo movie. <gasps> I know, right? Wow. I love Rambo. I know you but do. But this movie looks so awful, and I thought that the first time I, people tell me, "Oh man, that new Rambo trailer looks pretty cool," right? And I was like, eh, "No, no, it actually does. It looks like looks terrible." 
It looks terrible. Yeah, um, I, I had avoided the trailer up until they started doing the TV ads because I just didn't care. See, I was actually looking forward to a new Rambo movie until I saw the new trailer. It looked like a fan-made Rambo movie, like a really bad fan-made Rambo movie. Technically, aren't most movies fan movies, fan-made well, that, movies? That is true, but I meant like, you know, like low budget, the kind you'd see like uh, someone who's trying to get his like little homemade production company off the ground makes a little short on like YouTube that's got copyrighted characters that he can't <laughs> profit off of, but hopefully he gets hired. Um, there was one fan movie that was awesome. It was Batman Dead End. Oh, that was so good. That was good. incredible. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whatever happened to those guys. I, I don't know. If, if that doesn't get you work in Hollywood, I don't know what would, but it's too bad because that was fantastic. That's a shame. Yep. Oh, How about well. you? <laughs> How was your weekend? I just hung out, relaxed. Not a whole hell of a lot. All right. Well, uh, that's, the end of the sh- of, that's the end of the show, everybody. We're a couple of wild <laughs> and crazy guys over here. <laughs> Next year for Halloween, we should dress up as the wild and crazy guys. <laughs> Not this oh, yeah. year, because no, I'm going to no, be no. Hopper, uh, but next year. That no. should be us. You, yeah. get the high, you get the Hawaiian shirt? Yep. Oh, yeah. I got my, everything but the blazer. My buddy did, too. Yeah. Except he's bald, and it's pretty funny when he's got sunglasses on. As well. you, you look like a community college professor hanging out with your students out on the quad. <laughs> What's going on right now? <laughs> I was like, what is this ensemble I'm looking at? <laughs> See, I'm even growing my and hair that was, out. That was before I... Before I, I watched the show, but it was, it, was, it was pretty funny. No, I imagine that's going to be like the number one costume this year. It's probably going to be Date Hopper. Yeah. I was Hopper last year for Halloween, too, but I was like normal in uniform Hopper. I need to get Date Hopper Pop. That's a good oh, one. Yeah. I saw it at Walmart the other day. I don't Is know it? why I didn't pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be Mag- Magnum Hopper? Yes. Nice. I'm trying to give it to my girlfriend to be Joyce. I don't think it's going to happen. You should get her a fake mustache and have her be a Lexi. <laughs> it's not an insult. I'm just saying that'd be funny. Well, no, I, Lexi doesn't have a mustache. That's what I was, that's what I was confused by. I was like, wait oh, a minute. Oh, that's yeah. right. He doesn't. What am I thinking? <laughs> no, but he has a Slurpee. Just, just get her yeah. a Slurpee. Yeah. yeah. And a Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> it wasn't until the second time I watched season three that I realized when it's he's walking up. It's been a long up, weekend. When he's walking up to Murray and he's got his Woody Woodpecker yeah. that he won. Uh, Murray does the Woody Woodpecker laugh That's right before you he gets should, shot. You should be Murray, and then she should be Alexi. I can be Murray like 10 years from now when my hairline is that far back. Because um, that's my estimate. By 10 years, I should have like that, the Murray <laughs> kind of hairline. You know, All right. Everybody uh, mark it in your calendars. That would be like episode, what, 600-something <laughs> of the Oh My Geek podcast. <laughs> be such a Remember, topical right? Halloween costume, too. Remember in episode 70, I, don't, I haven't kept track, I'm just guessing. Um, I can't count. Uh, when Nick said he was going to be Murray for Halloween, oh, did boy. he ever follow up on that? It should be uh, episode 68, I think, is what we're at right now. I, I just never kept count, because... <laughs> That it's it's well. There's been a few lost to the ether. Every yes, every that's episode true. is like the first Several. episode of me. Oh, it's adorbs. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I lost count because there's like four or five of them that we recorded and never actually saw the light of day. Yeah, yeah. Some purposefully, we didn't allow to see the light of day. There was that one, yeah. And then others that we just messed up. Yep, that's okay. And, and there just... was one that legitimately got lost. That's right. Yeah. That we thought got posted. Yeah. And then we <laughs> couldn't find it. It was that one night where we talked a lot about Shaq and Kobe. Right. And the second Batman v Superman trailer had hit, we spent a lot of time discussing that. Yeah. And it was like, we recorded for like three hours, I think. Yeah. And then just, no, it was just gone. G couldn't find it anywhere. And then we brought that up during the, the NFL, the Super Bowl experience. Yeah. We were in Frisco. Yeah. 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 And uh, we were waiting. We waited, what? Two hours in line to see the Lombardi Trophy. Was and it that long? And I think that's. I think it was about an hour and a half, two hours in okay. line. And uh, mm-hmm. that's when we brought it up. And I was like, oh, "You lost it." And she was like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "The episode where we talked about all this." And he was like, "I don't know." And I was like, "Oh my god, you should find it because that was a good episode." I thought you posted it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We went ahead and waited that because I mean, how often are you going to get to stand you know next to it and take a picture with this? We're like, well, might as well. We're yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Done everything else. So, and not to sound cheesy, but when you're waiting in line with your friends, it doesn't seem as long because you have someone you can talk to. Yeah. If you're waiting in line by yourself, oh, that sucks. And it was a very interesting crowd. Yeah, it was. And if I remember correctly, didn't we all at separate times hop out of line to go in the Skittles experience? Yeah. 
It was a bunch of free Skittles. That's right. I literally stuffed my pockets full of bags of free Skittles. Mm, Jesus. Skittles. Yeah. They were delicious. And it was like regular Skittles, too, so the good Skittles. Not mm. any of those like other flavors that usually suck. I like like the island ones that... I mean, some of them are all right. I bought it's crazy. I bought like a Halloween theme like bag, right? Right. Of Skittles the other day, and I'm eating them, and like every random one tastes like completely disgusting. Like the best I can describe it was it kind of tastes like SpaghettiOs. Was it spooky? And I couldn't figure <laughs> out. I thought I, just, I thought I just kept getting like bad Skittles, and I was like every five or six, I'm like, oh, they're that, that nasty flavor again. What the hell? And I look at it, and one of them says, oh, random flavor, rotting zombie. Nice. <laughs> what? Uh, Who would do that? Skittles, apparently. That's disgusting. Like, it's was disgusting. it disgusting? It was what, awful. Was it Harry Potter's what? But see, with that, you know what you're getting into. Jillian's? Like, I had no idea. Well, A, because I neglected to actually read. But B, <laughs> because who puts a I rotting zombie flavor in a bag of Skittles? Skittles. Yes, yes, they did. I mean... But I got off topic. The NFL experience was awesome. It was better than the actual Super Bowl that year. Because that Super Bowl sucked. I don't even remember who played that year. That was the Broncos and the uh, Panthers. Oh, yeah. Where Cam Newton was too afraid to you know, try to recover his own fumble. Yeah. It's a spooky ball. <laughs> Not mine. You got it. No, you got it. No, you got it. But we had oh, a good time. That's great. And the... So it was supposed to the Super Bowl was at Levi Stadium, which a lot of people out of the area don't realize isn't actually in San Francisco. Right. But the NFL experience was in San Francisco. Yes. And uh I remember thinking to myself, couldn't have had this at Great America? Like right next door to Levi Stadium? Come on, man. But no, they did not. No, they didn't. Yeah. But we had fun, so I don't really care. That's great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I regret not doing the kicking uh um Remember they had like all those like you could do. You didn't do the you only I did, did the, the passing. Touchdown? Oh, yeah. okay. But that's because the kicking one, the line was too long. But I really right. wish I had done that. Yeah, because <laughs> it looked like it was more fun. Two hours for the Lombardi show. If you're not a big deal kicking the football, well, I think, can't possibly wait for that. Well, I think it was more of one of those things like I don't want to try and kick in front of all these people. Mm. That, no, that line was huge though. It was. Yeah, it was, it was. It was the longest line. Yeah, and then also too because there were a lot a lot of little kids. Yeah, so it was like. Okay, let's take our time, you know, 10 minutes with, you know, little Johnny who wants to kick a field goal, mm. you know, with a long line of people. So you're talking, it would have been like an all-day wait. Get out of here, kid. Yeah. You're going to make it good. <laughs> let's give up already. Dreams. Ugh. <laughs> You'll never make it in the NFL, kid. What a loser. <laughs> you can't even make a field goal. And then I forget, whose autograph did you get that day? I got Darius Hayward Bay and DJ Hayden's autographs because they were the only two. Well, at the time, DJ Hayden actually was a Raider still. Darius Hayward Bay was with the Steelers, but he was a Raider. And so they had whatever like Bay Area people they could get were there. And uh, I waited. And then probably about 30 minutes into that line, I realized, oh, man, I, I don't even like these guys. I just. But you were committed. But I was committed. <laughs> and then and then Jesse You're G so polite. and Jesse G waited, and I was like, I don't want this wait to be in vain. So I, I got up, and uh, DHB was actually nice. Like he was, you know, I mean, you had to get up, get the autograph, and go. There was no time for chit chat, but like DHB, like was like polite. He smiled and looked friendly. D- DJ Hayden just looked like he just didn't want to be there at all, and he definitely didn't want to sign my hat, but he did anyway. Hmm. Um, but he's kind of a jerk from what I heard in real life. So like whatever. Um, yeah. He's 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 Jacksonville's problem now. So who cares? <laughs> Uh, you're my family and I love you, but you're terrible. You're all terrible. Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, but I was in the line for like over an hour. Yeah, and that I, was a while. And then at one point I realized I actually can't physically get out of this line. I'm kind of like gridlocked in here. <laughs> oh, and then it was kind of funny too because then later on, of course, you know, we're getting hungry and we're deciding where to go for lunch. And we're like in the in like the basement section of the convention center. And so there was like two food vendors that were down there and one of them was pizza so we're like oh well let's go get some pizza and we looked at the price and then realized wait papa john's is like upstairs on the ground level just handing out free pizza yeah let's go so i so we just went out and got free pizza yep like duh just kept getting back in line yeah that was close it was close it was close yeah um but that, then i th- think that's why he couldn't kick too much pizza mm. yeah yeah too much pizza um, 
I couldn't throw either because I ended up hitting like the hitting like the the ceiling. I was trying to hit the seventy yard target, and I ended up like hitting the ceiling. <laughs> We're going for distance straight up, right, guys? The how we measure? You mean I'm not supposed to hit the mascot in the head? <laughs> uh, uh, that's on YouTube, by the way. Oh yeah, we recorded that and put it up on YouTube. Um, because why not? Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a very vain person. <laughs> I like whatever attention I can get whenever I can get it, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, uh, there was like other stuff we just never, like, like, we didn't do any of the VR stuff. Did they have, I forgot. They, they had like a VR. VR setup, and I was just like. There was, I mean, there was a lot of stuff yeah. that was cool. Again, it was fun to go to, but there was other stuff where it was like, meh. Oh, yeah, there was lots of pass on, yeah. disappointed. Yeah. Like, we waited to go. And sure were... just went to Dave and Buster's, guys. <laughs> Would have been cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, like we waited to go into this one. Was it like NFL Super Bowl like highlights thing? Yeah, and we thought that it was going to be you know kind of like what you would see in Inside the NFL, you know, with great narration and music and really dramatic. It wasn't very good at all. It didn't had none of that. Yeah. It was like set to music, and I was like, oh, all right. The autumn wind is a raider. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see that at all. Surprisingly. That would have been cool, but it was like in a room, like and like it was almost like like a little theater setup. Yeah. But instead of theater seats, it was just and like ottomans that we sat on. <laughs> like right, like it was like basically yeah. ottomans. There was no backings, any. It was like just right. stools, like padded stools you sat on, and each one lasted like maybe ten minutes. But like, yeah, it, it just. It's weird. Um, well, what else was there? The cool there was thing was they had there. they had a mini Canton set up, so there was like a, there was a Hall of Fame exhibit. Oh yeah, that was probably the best part. Yeah, of it. that's right. That yeah. was cool. Yeah, um, for those of us who have never actually gone to Canton, it was like an idea of this is what Canton is like. Mm. So that was pretty cool. So we don't have to go now. I don't want to go to Ohio anyway. I'm I'm cool. Okay. My All dad's right. from Columbus. That's that's the closest I want to get. <laughs> now I've got Ohio from C S Y N. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah, C S Y N, yeah. Yeah, sounds Roger right. Roger Stills, Nash and Young? Or something like that. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, stuck. Mm. Okay, on to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> now he speaks up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to hang out at the uh, the Monterey Jazz Festival this weekend. Nifty. So this is my weekend to... To work. Did you snap your fingers? With them, I did snap my fingers. I did. You wear a beret? <laughs> no. Don't go, I don't go that far. <laughs> had a little cigarette. <laughs> I did have coffee. I had a lot of coffee because yeah. it was cold. Wow. It was cold uh, every night over the weekend. But no, it was fun. They contract They contract me every year to go and work with them and do different tasks with them. But it's, it's always a blast. I played a band for you guys earlier, mm-hmm. Lark and Poe. Yeah. They're a blues duet. Uh, sisters and they're awesome so yeah. if i had any recommendation i would say for anybody to go and check them out lark and poe yeah they were fun they were good that was good stuff yeah who else was at the jazz festival oh uh, let's see who else diana crawl um chris body um i like chris body he uh really really nice guy we actually uh took some people into his uh he had a meet and greet with inside of his uh his dressing room right before he went on so we had a couple of VIPs that we got to take down there to meet with him, and he was he was really cool. So that was nice. And uh, Christian McBride was there, um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of people. A, a few years ago, Chris Body was playing, I think, Golden State Theater. Okay, and they had a commercial for it on TV, and I, I mean, my girlfriend watched TV, and I got really excited. I'm like, oh, I actually kind of want to go see him. She's like, who is he? And I'm like, oh, it's I'm a music nerd, so uh, I was like, he's a jazz trumpeter. And she was like looking at me like crazy. I'm like, it, he's really good, damn it. Like, <laughs> don't look at me that way. Um, I like good music. Don't hate on me. Uh, we did not go. I could not I could not convince her to go see a jazz trumpeter. Um I always wanted to play the trumpet. You could have seen him with me. I don't think this I don't think it ever came up a conversation to <laughs> it. Didn't. Uh, but no, when I was a kid I was in band and um I really wanted to play either saxophone or trumpet. Mm-hmm. Now, they told me there was only two instruments open, a trumpet uh, and a a trombone. And before I could say anything, the other kid was like, I want the trumpet. I was like, damn it. I was like, I can't play saxophone. The teacher was like, no, we don't have any more saxophones. 
I'm okay, fine. I'll play the trombone. That won't be an issue. And so, uh, can well, I pretend? So can right I away, a, can I just have a read? Well, so right away, <laughs> right? We go to the closet to get our instruments, right? And so we're moving stuff around. Okay, here's here's your trumpet. Okay, cool. So to get my trombone, it was deeper into the closet, so we had to move a bunch of stuff. And then she has me. Oh, here, hold, by the way, hold the saxophone. And I went, hold the saxophone. Went, well, what the hell? <laughs> you told me there was no saxophones. And the answer was, she just didn't want to add another saxophone. So I could have been playing the saxophone. Instead, I was playing trombone, and trombone sucks. Maybe she knew something about you. <laughs> I was 10 years old, guys. I'm just saying, maybe she, maybe she just knew that you could not handle it. I actually have a story involved uh, in this that I'm not uh, going to say on here. That's good. We but I'll tell you guys it. after. Um, <laughs> but no, so uh, when you're a 10-year-old... Uh-oh. What oh, yeah. did you do? It was nothing that, that I did, but that's neither here nor there. Um, no, when you're a ten year old somewhere, oh, I didn't do anything. <laughs> what you took us down this path? <laughs> All I said was um, out this jazz festival and Chris Body played this weekend. <laughs> this guy's over here talking about his trombone. <laughs> uh, so, as I was saying, when you're ten years old and you walk to school every day, and you have to take your trombone home to make practice, right? And you have to carry Nerd. that thing to school every day. It is a major pain in the ass, and eventually, I got kicked out of band. It would have been as just much of a pain to carry a saxophone. It's not nearly as heavy as a trombone. Yes, it is. Not when you're ten. <laughs> saxophone is like this, and a trombone's like that. Oh, no, true. so for those who can't yeah. see, I'm gesturing a about a couple of feet versus like four some odd feet, and it's so, so much heavier. A trombone is way heavier than a saxophone. Wait, so you didn't pull it out and carrying put it case. in the case? No, we're carrying it with the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trombones are way heavier than yeah, a saxophone. it would have been the sa- all right. Whatever. Yeah. It's not worth it. I know. It is to me because I know I'm right. Yeah, but whatever. I know you're right. <laughs> ten year old Nick. Ten year old Nick is not gonna back down from this. No, I th- I mean, no, I think he just insisted it was heavier yeah. because he didn't want to play it. Yeah. No, it's a larger instrument, therefore a larger case. It's a heavier thing. A tuba is a larger instrument. <laughs> that one's a longer instrument. No, yeah. there's not a whole hell of a lot extra to go no, along with this. Tu- thing. Yeah, tubas are bigger <laughs> than trombones. Mean, yeah. But no, like yeah, it it's it, yeah, it, it carrying a trombone is much 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 more a pain in the ass than carrying a, a saxophone. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> uh welcome to band talk. Yeah, I did get to play with an orchestra before I got kicked out of band, though. So that was cool. That's great. <laughs> this one time I got nothing. Band can't? Yeah. I got nothing. Yeah. Uh. Oh, so, uh, some some fun news. Yes. So uh, on top of all of the other places where our fans can listen to us, which right as of now includes Stitcher and Podbean and iTunes, they can now also find the Oh My Geek podcast on iHeartRadio. Jam on it. So if you have the iHeart the iHeart Radio app, you can now find Oh My Geek on there. So if you haven't yet, please Go on there and hit subscribe. That's just another place where you, you can get us. These fancy boys. I know. So just trying to get our, our show out into as many things that people use nowadays. And you can also find our show on YouTube. Not all of our shows post because quite often we do play music in them. Mm-hmm. And so and YouTube doesn't like that very much. And so those Man. do not get posted. YouTube likes to flag a lot of videos. I know that from experience. Yeah. So, um, which, you know, whatever. But uh, anyone who subscribes to us on all these platforms will get a shout-out on the show for me, but you have to actually tell me first because I don't have a way of knowing otherwise. Where can they find you to tell you? Uh, at, uh, on Twitter at either Nick underscore Black or Hash Brown Nick. There you go. So you can do that. And another place where they can let us know. So this I mentioned it last week that I would be making an announcement in this episode. Yeah. So on Saturday, October the 12th at... Los Angeles Comic Con, uh, I will be making an appearance. Yay. And um, so, on behalf of the Oh My Geek podcast, I will be do, uh, moderating a panel. So, we've done this panel before mm-hmm. at our shows, and we've been invited to a Disney convention to do it as well. So, um, so, our fans may know this one, or maybe they don't if they're new listeners. We host a panel called The Happiest Panel on Earth. And so, that is where I get up there sometimes with other people that I worked with at the park, and we share funny stories about what it's like working at Disneyland. So it's going to be fun because now that this one's down in Southern California, more of my you know my ex coworkers, my ex skippers live down there, 
So I've got a larger gathering of former Jungle Cruise skippers, and we will be on this panel. It'll take place at, uh, so it's Saturday, October the 12th at 12 p.m. in room 308AB. So it's a it's a pretty large room. So I think they're expecting a lot from. Will, us. There be a, will be that be the backside of water room or something? The, yeah, I know we should call. We'll come, we'll come up with something fun to call it. But uh, yeah, for every everything you ever wanted to know about being a cast member at Disneyland, but we're well, I want to say too afraid to ask, but you didn't have anyone to actually <laughs> there ask. There you go. This is the place for you. Sometimes people are. You've seen at our panels. It's really funny when they want to know information and we share a lot. And then we open the floor to questions, and it takes a while for somebody to like be the the first brave one to just ask a question. Mm-hmm. It's all it's always funny how that happens. And then once somebody does, then other people start asking questions. But it's always funny to say, "Does anybody have any questions?" Because you know that they do, and that nobody wants to raise their hand. I mean, I, I I can share some experience from working here at the shop that like whenever I offer my help to someone, they will start. I have a question, but it's kind of stupid. And they'll ask me a perfectly normal, legitimate question, right? So a lot of times people just are intimidated to ask questions. And yet the people who aren't intimidated to ask questions are usually the ones who ask stupid questions. That's right. Remember, there are no stupid questions, just stupid people. That is true. (laughs) I think Um, that's how the saying is, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, But yes, come down, ask him. Ask, ask, if you go there, ask Jesse the most bizarre question you can think of. I guarantee you he'll have an answer. Well, and it won't just be me. Like I said, I'm going to be up there with, I think now we have five other skippers that are mm. going to be up there. So it's going to be a, a large, uh, you know, a somewhat large gathering of... Be a skiptastic fun so, time. The six skippers. And most of us have not seen each other probably as a group since we all worked together. Which, so I imagine which, all the memories are going to come. Start I think so. so it's it's going to be a yeah. blast, and it's going to be hard for us to keep to to the time frame. But th- but that's okay, because then that just means that hopefully we'll be invited back to to do it again. But now, I'm looking forward to it. Now, are there any plans to record this panel? Uh, I'm hoping so. Okay. So that is the intention right now, is to record the panel, and then if not release the whole thing, at, re- at least release a portion of it as a special episode. Nice. Oh, cool. I look forward to that. I yeah. do too. Like I said, I, I'm look, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends and uh, just doing because I have a lot of fun doing this panel. Um, so again, the happiest panel on earth at Los Angeles Comic Con, Saturday, October the twelfth at twelve p.m. in room three zero eight A B. And if you forget, just look up the happiest panel on earth uh, on their schedule, and you will find all of the information. Be there or be square. That's right. So that's going to be fun. Nice. Yeah. That'll be fun. And then if you guys have anything on your shopping list, if there's any vendors there, just let me know. Not not listeners talking to you guys in the room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up. I didn't I, I forgot. I'm getting that, emails. I, didn't I, th- I forgot that the LA Comic Con was coming. The, for some reason, in my head, I was thinking it was the end of the month, and I thought New York Comic Con was next weekend. So I'm like, oh, man, I got I to gotta go look up all this info now. I'm like, I'm getting my, my conventions mixed up. I know. They just announced, too, that um, for LA Comic Con that... On that day, on Saturday at four thirty, the director of Zombieland Two is going to be making some sort of a special presentation on the main stage. When is that coming out? That soon, right? Because I'm yeah. starting to see TV spots yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So in just a couple of weeks, I think. So a few weeks. So I'm wondering. I'm wondering if it's going to be like an advanced screening or something, or just bringing out the stars, or zombies. We're zombies. Yeah, we yeah. could all be killed yeah. in there. Which you know, had a good run. <laughs> nice knowing you. <laughs> oh goodness! Uh, so, Mister Nick, yes, what's on the shelves this week in Comic Land? Uh, g- the new Ghost Rider comic is out, uh-huh. starring the first two Ghost Riders, Donny, uh, Danny Ketch, and uh, Johnny Blaze. Well, that's good, especially um, since oh, the series the isn't going to happen. Show. I know. I forgot they were doing a series originally. Someone told me they already canceled the Ghost Rider. I'm like, what are you talking about? The first issue comes out next week. They said, no, Hulu canceled it. I was like, what's Hulu doing canceling comics? <laughs> and someone was like, They're doing a, they were doing a Ghost Rider show. <laughs> I was like, oh, crap, I forgot all about that. I did, too, until I saw that. <laughs> Then it's okay. So the new guys, Ghost Rider comic, new Ghost so Rider, not com- the PBS show. <laughs> no, that's Ghost Rider. Oh, sorry. But that's a, I've actually had other people. <laughs> I make got that you. I was there with you. Um, I know I've seriously had people in the shop make that mistake. Honestly, when talking about Ghost Rider, they're like, "I used to watch that show." I'm like, "Oh no, it, <laughs> this is very different. Not quite as kid friendly." Um, the uh, we got Black Terror. I can't see because everything is over here. Um, 
and it was a, it was you know busy Wednesday, so like my mind is kind of like everywhere, um, and nowhere. My mind is always nowhere. I'm not really this intelligent or charming. It's all a facade. Um, <laughs> there was an absolute carnage tie-in that was really popular today. Immortal Hulk. Um, Batman came out. Batman number eighty, which means Tom King has five more issues to go before his run is completely over. Mm-hmm. Um, and James Tinian's taken over, so I'm really excited about that. Cool. Um, a bunch of other stuff came out too. Like I said, I can't see the wall, and I don't want to get it because it's going to make a lot of noise on the microphones and stuff. That's fine. Yeah, some uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. And where can they find good stuff if people want to come shopping? At Current Comics in Salinas at 1287 North Main Street, Suite D, or 400 Lighthouse Avenue in Monterey, California. Fantastic. I mean, you guys can go to other places if you want, but I mean, you, should, you should really come here instead because, yeah. you know, it's, it's just better. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, well, especially if you're in the area. <laughs> especially if you're in the area, but if you want to travel. That's the best time to come. But if you want to travel, this is the place to go. <laughs> it's true. Yes. You can talk about the show with Nick. Yes, you That's can. right. Yeah. And uh, if you come at the right time, you can even technically be on the show like that one time a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Uh, well, maybe, uh, maybe this coming month we'll do another a live in, episode. In store show. <laughs> see how that goes. Uh, when you're not doing fantasy football. I wasn't doing fantasy football the whole time. There was that one time I was just with a customer that entire time. <laughs> uh, for that really long, uncomfortable amount of time. Um, he came back. Oh, good. And I was, was like, Was he wondering where the microphones were? No, <laughs> no. But I was like, I remember like him go, Well, I can be interviewed. And I was like, Oh, I've never really done an interview before. I don't even about, know how to do it. But I was like, Sure, okay. How about no? Um, <laughs> it didn't come up a conversation, but um, I don't think I'd be a good interviewer. Well, first off, somebody you need to have a reason to interview somebody, not just to do it. Um. Well, yeah, yeah, but so I just—I don't know what questions I would ask. I think yeah, I'd be really bad at. Too much. Uh, I would ramble too much, um, and I'd probably do something like insensitive, like what Jimmy Kimmel did last night to Joaquin Phoenix. You know what, though? I okay. So, bring up what happened. So, uh, you know, Joaquin Phoenix is right. on Kimmel last night promoting this weekend's Joker movie, and director Todd Phillips had sent Jimmy Kimmel some outtakes, but not like funny outtakes. Like some serious outtakes where mm-hmm. apparently Mr. Phoenix was having some trouble uh, being distracted by a cinematographer. And I'm not going to say what he was saying because it involves some naughty words. But uh, he was very noticeably frustrated. And uh, I didn't quite understand the purpose of showing that. Like, again, I'm, I'm expecting something funny, like normal like bloopers, kind of stuff like that. Yeah. No, it's, it's serious stuff. And then it cuts to Joaquin Phoenix, and he looks rather, even he admitted, oh, that's embarrassing. And I was like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. And I thought he was a good sport about it, all things considered. But I didn't really get where Jimmy Kimmel thought all this was going to be funny. I think, honestly, I think Joaquin knew. Looking at his... I mean, normally he would. As, usually, it, went, yeah. as it went on, it started to dawn on me. It was like, okay, he's part of this. But... Cause I it's, hope so. Otherwise, Todd Phillips seems to be a bit of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I, th- I think he was in on it. But... Well, he did do that one. Uh, he was oh, in yeah. on the joke for two whole years, right? Yeah. But so that that's why that's what I think it was. Otherwise, it would just be the director just wanting to still push his buttons a little bit to make him uncomfortable. But I I think overall I think Joaquin was in on it. But it was it was rather awkward to watch, and I was like, ah, this isn't really funny. I thought I actually I thought it was funny. I didn't think it was funny. At all. I thought it was funny. But you don't have uh, a sense of humor, so just saying. Just saying. I will have you know, I know, I know a I do very, know. very good knock knock joke, but just the <laughs> just the one. No, I know two. Of them. I know two of them. I've got one. Yeah. Um, knock oh, knock. Do you want me to say it now? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All together now. <laughs> yeah, I did watch. I, I I think he was in on it personally. Yeah. Um, personally. But uh, I, I I'm not gonna watch this Joker movie, guys. I. I don't want a Joker origin story. I don't. I w- I want to see it, just to see what what everybody is going crazy over. Oh yeah, so, people love it. The hype is real. Yeah, so the hype I, I, is I real, do but... I do want to see it. But uh, yeah, I want to see it, but I don't think it's going to be like a true 
I'm not going to look at it as a true origin story. Yeah. No, but that's how it's being presented as, and that's right. the problem with it. Because now I have to listen to people go, no, I know Joker's origin. I saw the movie. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it's, it's yeah, I, I don't want to see it based on principle. So, But I, I'm intrigued from a lot of the things that, that I'm hearing about it, so I, I definitely want to go check it out. But I'm going to cheat later and look up the plot description on Wikipedia. Of course you are. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't even want to watch the movie, though. So okay. it's like, yeah, it's All right. That's not fine. really spoilers if you don't actually want to watch the movie. That's fine, then, yeah. if, you're, if you're trusting you know, Wikipedia. Or... Well, I mean, now that the reviews are out, I think you can. Tr- I mean, it's only like a day away. You, usually at this point, the Wikipedia plot description is pretty accurate. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But also, too, I think I want to watch it to experience it because apparently it's supposed to really leave you guessing with a lot of things. And so that's why I'm wondering if maybe they aren't, pre- even though they are through the advertising, mm-hmm. I'm wondering if watching the movie, that it turns out to be one of those things where it's not really going to be a true Joker origin story, where I, th- I don't know. I do know that there's like a fan theory out there that this actually isn't about the Joker, but since I didn't want to watch the movie, I didn't really bother looking into that fan theory. Right. So I, I don't really know how convincing or not that is. Yeah. So yeah. apparently the the very the ending is supposed to be very obscure. So that's why I'm very I'm uh, that's why one of the things I'm uh, why I'm really curious to go and see it and experience it for myself rather than looking it up because mm-hmm. I think it's one for me it it sounds like it's going to be one of those movies where you have to watch it to really experience what they're trying to make you feel and figure out. And I think if I were to go and read. For, for myself, at least. If I were to go and read up on it, I think that would ruin the experience for me. And for a movie that's supposed to be this provoking, I'd rather experience it. Yeah. I, I don't I don't need any more provocation this week. It's a, I need some happy stuff. I get it. I need it, especially after tonight. Oh, I man. get it. Do you want some happy stuff? I want some happy stuff. Well, it was fun. Even though we knew it was going to happen, it was officially announced yes. by Netflix that Stranger Th- Things Season 4 is going to happen. So we got an interesting little teaser that uh, came out this past week. Let's go ahead and play this. So it starts off with the four to get you all excited, like we've seen before. And then, whoa, what's yeah. going on here? And then suddenly we're in the upside down. Yep. Right outside of Hawkins, because you can see the Welcome to Hawkins the sign. The Welcome to Hawkins sign. Bunch um, of uh, trees and foliage, and then a light. Oh, it's not just that. So Okay, so I'm pausing here so we can see yeah. it. So we have the Hawkins sign, Looks so like we're used to that. Up to the house. There's a newspaper the right here that we can't see what it is. Mm-hmm. This is Hopper's Cabin. That definitely is Hopper's Cabin. It's Hopper's Cabin. So I was questioning that, because I thought initially, too, but then I was like thinking, but... There's the welcome to Hawkins sign, and Hawkins uh, Hopper's cabin is pretty deep in the woods, so there wouldn't be a welcome to Hawkins sign right right across. And then also, well, I don't think it's necessarily necessarily supposed to be like this is where everything is located and oh, how okay. close it is. I think it's supposed to give you an idea, yeah, yeah, that okay, Hawkins in the upside down, so you have his cabin, and then also in the tree over here you have a clock. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, so I thought it was a, a hole. So you have a clock right here that has some blood on it. So if I play a little bit, I think. You oh, might is get that why people are thinking time travel? Because there's a clock. So the clock, before we get to that, the clock is ticking down to, it looks like 6 o'clock. And so right before it it cuts out, the light on the porch goes out. Yeah. And then you hear the, the clock bells. We're not in Hawkins anymore. So yeah, guys, Hopper's still alive. Or is he? Or when is he? Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. That's the other thought is, okay, so... Back in time. Well, I mean, we started talking about that with season three. Yep. That they were, they were really hitting on the Back to the Future movie. Yep. And to, and, it, and we've already learned now, uh, there, we've learned enough to know that they're always placing seeds of what's going to happen in the next season from the season prior to it. If Hopper is in 1885, I swear to God, <laughs> I will accept. I like that one. 2015, though, if Hopper is in 2015, that'd be pretty cool. Especially if it's not like the real life 2015. If it's like Back to the Future 2015 with like mm-hmm. flying cars and stuff, yeah. mm-hmm. and the Cubs winning the World Series. Or when did um... Jaws 10, <laughs> whatever it was? When did the uh, um, 
Manhattan experiment take place? 1942. 42? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing, too. So I can't remember because it's been so long, but in season three, in the finale, when they're in Russia, did it say like five months later for them, or did it have a date? Um, or did it just say Russia? No, but I think the 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 epilogue to the to season three takes place is it three months later. I I don't remember if it set a date or not. That's what I'm trying to think. Because I I don't want to say was, it's supposed to be three it months. Like six months. No, no, I'm pretty sure it's three. Okay, well, because I don't remember a date, and if there wasn't a date, yeah, then how do we know that it's actually but, present time? You know, what? Okay. I'm going to Wikipedia. I'm looking to talk, talk amongst yourselves. Let me yeah. just instead of going to Wikipedia. Let me find the clip. Okay. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty convinced it's three months later, like specifically three months later, because I think it says three months later. Okay. Um, like until I'm until I'm told otherwise, I've convinced myself that this is the case. Yeah, I mean, uh, mine's just a whole guess. Uh, but six months but. with the Kamchatka Russia thing, it doesn't. It definitely doesn't give like a. It just you know goes the credits, and then you see a little snow, and then it says Kamchatka Russia. But doesn't yeah. it, the assumption is it's after the events of the final scene. Um. But we also See, it doesn't it doesn't give a date. Well, no, 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 no. So not the the Russia part, but that's, the end when they're moving away, though. Yeah, that's different, though. But yeah, that's there's it. nothing I'm, here to we're indicate. We're not talking that, about that. But no, not, no, I know. But that's that's this follows that scene. So there's nothing to indicate that this doesn't take place at the same time as that. The, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. so this Russia scene doesn't have a date on it. It does not. No. So the so the question that I'm posing is: Is this even in the act the current timeline of Stranger Things? Oh, yeah, so it's entirely possible. Well, mute it and keep running and see if it does anything, because I know it... Because I don't think it... So I think the idea being posed here is that this scene in Kamchaka, Russia, could be in a different time. Yeah, exactly. If if Hopper's sent back in time. Yeah, they were already listed as... Yeah. Yeah, Not the American. Okay, so... Singular. Yeah, so we know the rest... So th- that's what I was curious about. If, if we are doing a whole possible time jump thing, could this scene be taking place in a di- in a you know, a, 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 I don't want to say di- a different timeline because that makes it sound you know like MCU stuff. But is this taking place in an earlier time or a future time? Yes, either is possible. Anything is possible. Yep, because it's science fiction. It is. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's uh th- that that. But back to the teaser. Yes. Like a lot of people took that teaser, which has, I'll say, little visual information. Yeah, we don't it, see it, a it, lot. It obviously is placing a few Easter eggs in here. But people have taken this and have like extracted it's so much information. I haven't even been able to listen to all the theories because of this, or uh, theories as a result of this teaser. But we all know I'm of the belief that Hopper is alive. Right. And so I think I think we most all of people are, are yeah. 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 And I see this, and this just slaps me across the face with Hopper is alive. Right. That's how I feel. Um, although the first oh, time, the yeah. first time I saw season three, I didn't think Hopper yeah, was alive. Remember, we were on the paper. You remember we were talking about it. I thought it was wishful thinking. I want him to be alive. Right. So I think people convinced. And the second time I saw it, I went, "Holy crap, Hopper's alive!" Yeah, and you can't really make out a date. Or any information on the newspaper, which I think is purposeful, but I think yeah. obviously everything is placed in this image for a, for a reason that we don't know what it is. Yes. The other sucky thing about this is that there was no release, release date, date. Yeah. Given with it. Yeah. No, they're gonna. Go, it's gonna be. But it'll be winter of next year. Yeah, I had at, seen at, some, at the earliest. But yeah. I had seen some chatter online. So take this for what it is. I will take it for what it is. Oh, um, that that production could start at the end of this month. I think they're already in production because there have or maybe at least pre production yeah. yeah, because they're pre. because yeah. I know that there have been photos that have been taken of the the, the vehicles. Yeah. in the different locations where they filmed that they're they've been in place and they're moving them around. But if production starts like soon then my Probably. assumption would be not the two year gap that we experienced last time but yeah, sometime but next year yeah. CGI and all that. No, no I, I I know but like that so gives them plenty of time. Yeah. But I mean like it 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 suggests to me that we're we're gonna get this possibly Sooner. 2020 yeah, as so opposed to 2021. Like oh, a lot no, of people we're getting thought. 2020. Yeah. Hope um, so. Yeah, gonna, I don't want to wait. It's gonna be late 2020, yeah. but it's not gonna be um 
And then you guys heard about the the Duffers, right? The deal they they signed, multi year yeah, movie and TV deal, right? So someone told me, oh, there's gonna be a Stranger Things movie, and I'm looking <laughs> and I'm seeing nothing online about a Stranger Things movie, just season four, right? And so I see, you know, like I think Hollywood Reporter or something like that. Oh yeah, they inked like a multi year uh, movie and TV deal, and I went, oh, I hate people sometimes. <laughs> so I yes. was looking on Yahoo or something. There's like. Oh well, this this great Netflix show is going to be canceled after season four, and I go, no, it can't be. So I go oh, click, and it's dear white people. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I was like, don't tell me you're going to cancel it after this one because I think I little, never they even watched things. it. Well, they say it's supposed to be some great show, but yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't I never, watched it. Never watched it. But that it it seems like they act certain shows after four seasons. I guess that's Netflix's gig. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't really. I don't know why. It's weird with Netflix because they don't really, uh, uh, you know, most of the time they don't release their numbers, right? They never release their numbers. They did for a couple shows. They no, they will tell you that it's like the it's the this was streamed so many more million times. Oh yeah, but they aren't. They never give actual viewership numbers. But also with something like like the subscription model, like Netflix, you see uh-huh. TV. It's it's uh, to me it's a lot more simple. You sell advertising, right? Right. And the more people watch, the more you can charge for advertising. The less people watch, the less you can charge for advertising. Right. So that's like a very good metric for a successful show versus a not successful right, show. Right. 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 With something like Netflix, their money is already there. Yeah. So how they specifically determine what shows are worth investing money in, what shows aren't, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. And their yeah. viewership, is yeah. Probably- and apparently the creators don't know either. Yeah. They don't give them the numbers. Yeah. And so it, it's I don't really know like why. You know, something like, you know, uh, Marco Polo got canceled after season two versus something like, um, what's the show that's like, is there any Netflix shows that are like in the season five and beyond? I, I can't think Not of it off the top of my head. But, Probably. Oh, but Orange is the New Black versus something like Orange is the New Black. Oh, okay. I don't really know what convinces them specifically we need to keep going with Orange is the New Black versus Marco Polo is getting the axe. Um, but they know it. Yeah. And they're pretty comfortable with what the, what they what they got going on. Well, it's production um, costs versus what they're getting streaming, right? But I mean, they're getting their money no matter what, though. Like, like the money's coming regardless of whether like one person watches the show or like a million people watch the show. They already have the money from the subscribers, right? But you're not going to want to put any money into production of a show when nobody's watching it. Well, I mean, regardless of, but like this is something that's always available. So what if like no one's watching it in year one, but let's say like. Two years from now, suddenly people start to pick up steam, and now word of mouth is growing, and like now people are watching it, and now you get like forty million people watching this one show that in its first year no one watched. Nah, gonna happen. No, I'm I'm providing a hypothetical here. Yeah, well, that's you know, happen. you and your hypothetical. Um, but I mean, because that happens all the time. Things that like no one was talking about before was not. I mean, we see it with cult movies all the time. Things that were not successful initially, but then suddenly, bam. Bam. Yeah, people actually really like this thing years later. Yeah, that's right. Bam. And now it's that, popular. That only works at movies mainly. Well, it doesn't technically work with movies because the movies were failures. <laughs> well, not in this, well. But that's what I'm getting at. With some like, video sales, but, you, well, they're still making money off of it. Well, yeah, technically. But what I'm getting at is with the Netflix thing is they already have their money. Right. So, like, like how do they determine we need to, like, like what what is a specific metric for, okay, we need to keep making this and stop making this? Uh, and, and honestly, I... I, I streaming numbers. Yeah, are. that's all it is. It's yeah. numbers that we don't see. Yeah. yeah. What I, the only thing that we I've ever learned from it is that that's how they, they made uh, House of Cards. House of Cards was created because they were able to look at their internal numbers that they don't release to anybody to yeah. realize how many people at that time... We're watching Kevin Spacey movies and political dramas. And so that they knew by those numbers, we need to create a political yeah. drama starring Kevin Spacey. And that was how they got they created House of Cards. Yeah. And, they, and they were correct because it became huge for them. So I just don't think we'll ever really see those numbers unless they start trying to sell advertising somehow with, with you know. Oh, they with, better not. If the ads are popping up, I'm canceling Netflix. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if sometime down the line we started getting uh, commercial trailers. Well, for a while we were getting commercials for other Netflix shows, which I'm right. cool with that. That that's no problem. But like, yeah. I don't want to see like a Tide ad in uh, you know, no. my Netflix programming. You know, <laughs> um, actually, I don't know why they stopped doing promos for other Netflix shows while you're watching Netflix. That made a lot of sense to me. You would want to promote your other stuff, right? 
I don't know. Again, yeah. it has something to do internally with what they probably saw. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Did so. you guys, I, I, I don't think either one of you guys have a PS3, right? That's correct. Okay. So on PS3, because for a while, there was a couple years ago where PS3 was the most commonly used device to stream Netflix. So they created this service called Max that was exclusive to PS3. Right. And the whole point of Max was to help you, the viewer, find out what you wanted to watch. And on paper, it sounded like a good idea. In practice, it was super annoying, and it never recommended anything worthwhile. <laughs> it was just constantly recommending things that were not successful, hoping it would get people to watch. But these were all like really bad movies. And I mean even bad movies by my standards. And so it, it was super annoying, and eventually I got a PS4, and fortunately Max was not on PS4. Hemlock Grove. Hemlock Grove was awful. <laughs> I watched the entire first season. And I thought Bill Skarsgård was a really bad actor because that was the only thing I had seen him in at the time. And now I know that, no, that just show was, that show was just miserably bad. Um, but speaking of streaming shows, I know this wasn't on the, our, our, our list of topics, but I got to bring up Creep Show on Shudder just started last week. Uh-huh. And it was awesome. Really? Because I heard it was awful. The first segment was like, man, the second segment was amazing. So it's it's an anthology series. You guys I don't know. I'll wait till I read the breakdown on Wikipedia. <laughs> I have not watched them, but I know what you speak of. It's an anthology horror movie. So now they're, we're getting a TV series, and each episode right. is two stories. Mm. And some of them are like adaptations of existing, you know, sh- like like the first one was like a, an adaptation of a Stephen King short story, and the second one was an original story. But we're getting so like like Paul Dini's writing a story for Creep Show, and like I I forget how many. I think Joe R. Lansdale's got a story that's it's, you know being used for Creep Show, and it's like it, I'm really excited. I thought it was awesome. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. That's great. Um. Shutter is really good right now. Is it? Like it, it and maybe just because like <laughs> Well no, so like like compared to something like Netflix, right? Netflix has a terrible selection of horror movies. And as far back as I can remember, they always have, right? Um That's Shutter like is just opinion, really man. I mean it, I'm not alone in this. It's it's their their selection's pretty bad. Like they don't even they don't even actually try. Like it's it's like bottom of the barrel horror movies. I don't trust anybody who says I'm not alone in this. <laughs> but I hear th- there's people. There's, there's people. They tell me I things. Heard things. I heard things. But you know what I heard? Huh. Loot Crate got bought. Yes, they did. I'm just trying to change the subject. Okay, we'll let's change the subject. <laughs> Loot Crate did get bought. Because <laughs> I don't care about Shutter. No, I'm just kidding. I love Shutter. I was gonna say I. I know someone that wouldn't appreciate yeah, you saying that. <laughs> so I changed my opinion really quick. <laughs> Sorry, Casey. Actually, I love Shutter. No, um, I don't know. I don't subscribe yet. Um, I, well, mean, I am interested in seeing the new Creep Show, but I started seeing a lot of people that that I know saying I, I don't like Creep, the new Creep Show. I thought it was so. incredible. Well, again, the first segment, man, the second the second segment blew me away. All right, absolutely blew me away. Okay, I'll, I'll, but, I'll check uh, it out eventually. Um, I haven't checked out their other shows. Like they have a Critter show, and I've been wanting to watch it because I love those movies. But I, I just have not yet brought myself to a. I don't know, man. Like, like I'm more of a Ghoulies Two guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of the Gate. Um, <laughs> gate. I actually like the Gate. Start a young Stephen oh. Dorff. Uh, but no, the Ghoulies movie. As a, as a child, after watching Ghoulies, I was actually terrified of the bathroom for a while. <laughs> or not even just the bathroom, the kitchen sink, anything with like a drain. I think uh, Porky's too kind of put me off the toilet for a little while. <laughs> oh, moving on. So yeah, so a couple, few episodes back, we talked about loot crate. Yes, we broke did. crate, uh, going into bankruptcy, <laughs> and we gave our theories about all the things that they probably did wrong. So the news came out that you shared with us today yes. that apparently loot crate has been bought by NECA. Yep. And uh it's just so they sent out a uh a bl- an email blast to all of their <laughs> I love their how loot they crate. Started. Their loot crate, yeah. Hey looters. <laughs> so we wanted to share some important company updates with you. First loot crate has been officially acquired by Money Chest LLC. Who are they? Well, they're majority funded by NECA, the company that owns Kid Robot and WizKids. And this is this is the the part that shows that they're really out of touch is just the way it's worded. That's right. We hit the new owner lottery. It's like, okay, maybe you guys shouldn't have mismanaged your money to be 
trying to get a new owner that has obviously a lot more money. Yeah. Because I think they're just showing their incompetence. Personally, I think it's showing more of their incompetence. By the way, this is whole, this whole thing is is worded. Their neck of but that's Lord. that's that's starting to become more. I'm starting to see this kind of stuff more commonly now. And that doesn't surprise. And so, I mean, it's it's all bad, but yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I don't want to spend too much on time on them being bought. Yeah. Because what I also learned in reading this article is so somebody who quit Loot Crate before the mass firings happened started to uh, to spill some tea on Reddit. So let me read some of the excerpts of their post. On, so this is on Bleeding Cool. They posted highlights of it. So they said about how bad the situation was, according to this person who worked for Loot Crate. I knew things were bad when my boss began sending me job postings to apply to, even post layoff. I don't believe every person in leadership ha- has given up on the company. And then two years ago, remember I said I, we talked about that this had to have been going on for a long, long time. time. Yeah. So they said more and more vendors were dropping were dropping us due to outstanding debts and talented employees were leaving in droves. We had a bit of hope when we acquired a COO from Amazon, but the co-founders would not listen to any of his advice, and he ended up jumping ship pretty quickly. More and more crates would be delayed as items were withheld due to lack of payment. Even the cardboard vendor for our crates withheld the actual boxes because we were so behind on paying them. The co-founders would get up in front of our all-hands meeting and tell us we were doing great, but there were no other signs that we were doing great. In one meeting, they pulled up a chart showing where we were saving money, and the biggest money saver was attrition. We received the bridge funding in January 2018, but we all knew it wasn't enough to put a dent in our debts. The writing was on the wall, and we were just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Um, And here, one of the things that I said, said they said, internally, we consistently warned that we were expanding too quickly and we did not have the resources. Leadership did not listen to us. Hmm. So that's just that's just some of it. You know, and so and now that I mean I have a feeling that if they, now that they've been bought, I think they're gonna get rid of those guys. Oh, I would imagine. Because now yeah. they, they don't own the company. It's yeah. no longer their company. Their neck is gonna take control. Yeah. I think so. So I think those those guys those whoever's in charge should say guys, because I don't know who they are, could be male or female. But I think whoever's in the leadership positions, I think they're gone. Well, what I want to know is who doesn't listen to a COO from Amazon? Them apparently. A- another thing that they wrote <laughs> that this person was writing was that the people that they were hiring to be in charge were just friends of theirs who had no experience in running anything <laughs> like this. Nice. Power moves. Oh, man, this is all classic incompetence. And again, right. it, ju- it just made me realize even more, like I had said during the last time, that I dodged a bullet with those guys. Yeah. So. Um, but with NECA, I mean, I'm a big fan of NECA, and I have been for a long, long time. Like, their toys are awesome. And so... My hope now is maybe Loot Crate stuff is going to be awesome again. I hope so. You know, I, I might even consider starting to subscribe to Loot Crate so again. So one of the things, too, and I'm trying to find exactly where it is, but I'll, I'll tell you. Well, so one, what of, they have. one of the things well, yeah. that you had said um, when we talked about it before was that they were starting to put in stuff that they had put before in their crates that you were getting it again. Yeah. That was because they weren't paying their vendors. Yeah. So they weren't getting the exclusives that they that they were supposed to be sending out. And so one of the guys who started the um, one of the other division, Loot Vault, just they had so much overstock, he just basically made his employees said, "Well, just put something else in it and call it." I forget what they called it, um, but uh, oh gosh, I wish I could find the the exact part of it. I'm also very impressed at how you're able to get Bleeding Cool to load so smoothly. On my end, it just takes forever. I've had this loaded up for a while so I could close oh, all of their stupid pop-up ads. Oh, that's why. Yeah. That's what, when you were talking about sh- Shutter. yeah. that's why I was, I don't know, that's honestly, that's why I was going, yeah, okay, whatever. Because yeah. I was trying to get, load this <laughs> to close all the ads. So people were like, oh, Jesse really hates Nick. I was, I was actually, unfortunately. No, but. So bleeding cool like kind of sucks. Yeah. Of your answers. It was right. about you like <laughs> I know what you're doing. Just... Um, so here, so yeah, here, yeah, that's okay. yeah. so uh, Chris Davis, co-founder and CEO of Loot Crate's involvement with the classic items that started appearing in the new crates. So this is what the employees said about <laughs> the classic that. Classic items. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what he was calling it. So here's what they said about it. So ultimately, it was Davis's idea. 
There was a month where a vendor was withholding products across Loot Crate, Loot Gaming, and Loot Anime. Davis instructed us to, quote, just throw an old item in. The whole company expressed concerns with this move. He came up with a way to spin it and say we were sampling other crates to help encourage our looters to sign up for other crates. We warned him that the number of crossover looters was too much for this to be an effective spin. We thought this would be an isolated case and gave up fighting it. It started happening more and more, and it was out of necessity to ship the crates when we couldn't get any new products from our vendors. There wasn't a single employee who wanted to do this or wanted to let down our looters. Some employees would get upset when the looters turned on, turned on them, but many of us expected, expected it and knew it was coming, but we had no power to stop it. We really cared, but our hands were tied. So yeah, so they call he so he called it classic items. So this is literally the exact same thing that happened to Nerd Block a couple of years ago. Oh, that's right. Like yeah, you were talking about that. Same yeah. thing. Um, and I mean, really, it's also no different than what happened with uh, the movie pass. It just you know, yeah. it's it's <laughs> if things are too good to be true, they probably are. Yeah. And when you're getting like sixty plus worth dollars worth of merchandise in a box for twenty bucks, eventually. It, this is this is the end result, you know. Well, yeah, and it and and this this employee is saying exactly what we had said before: is that it was fine when it was just loot crate. Yeah, but then within a couple of months, of so suddenly, oh, and this and this crate and this crate and this crate and this crate, and like she's saying, we expanded way too quickly. Yeah. You know, we didn't have the resources to expand into doing all of that, and it, and it showed. And then some of the other subscription box services that are still around were the ones that stopped the mailing things out and became store exclusives. Like you can still get some stuff at like Walmart, right. at Hot Topic, the Marvel ones, DC ones, like they all became store exclusives and that's why they went there because I think they saw the writing on the wall and knew this was the way this was the path of survival. And not only that, but then there are other ones that are only you know, only a few times a year. Yeah, like the Nick box. Yeah. But it's expensive. It's like right. way more expensive than I'm willing to pay. But they got cool stuff in there, though. Yeah, like I think Disney has one. Yeah. You know, but they're like maybe four times a year. Yeah. You know, so of course, okay, that makes sense that there's a longevity for something like that. But this, which, you know, a monthly subscription, if you have too many of them, why are they going to? And then one of the other things that they mentioned in this as well, uh, this the this insider, is that they had so much overstock that ob- they they had to get rid of it, and that's why you would then find it, on, you know, on Loot Vault. You'd be able to go on the website and buy it for a discount price. Yeah. So again, that hurts their product because these were supposed to be exclusive items only in you know in the crate. But now I don't have to buy the crate because I can just wait for it to be on sale on your website for two bucks. And uh, when all this started, like when Loot when Loot Crate started, and you know this whole thing took off, I remember telling people like, "Oh, they used to have this when I was like a little kid." The same thing. It was like you pay for a subscription, you get a box with a bunch of like, a, like random assorted merchandise. Like like I used to get a box that had like GI Joe stuff and Thundercat stuff and like Trans- Ninja Turtle stuff. I don't remember what it was called, but when I was a little kid, it was mailing stuff. But it was a box yeah. that came with everything, and it was something I would get every month, just like this. Well, they weren't going to put it in an envelope. Well, no, but I mean, it's, it's pretty much identical to all this. And I remember, and that ended up going away, too. Like, I didn't last long. It was like, you know, like, I, I think I had I it for like less than a that. year. Yeah. Um, so I I was telling people this is only going to last for so long, too, because they tried it in the past and it didn't really work. And uh, But now that it's being owned by NECA, my guess is it's going to be filled with NECA stuff. And if the company yeah. themselves is is the ones providing the merchandise, right. you're cutting out the middleman, and therefore you don't necessarily have to worry about the cost in the same way that they did with like paying vendors and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and they already have you know the licenses for you know different all these awesome things. Yeah. For yeah. different properties that you know they have these items, but yeah, I, I think that they're going to clear house with who with the leadership yeah. there at, at Loot Crate. But I think this this has a lot of potential. Bye-bye. It does. Yeah. It does. So, I mean, we'll see within the next, you know, few months. But obviously, like you said, that 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 email that they sent out just shows how incompetent they are. Well, but when I was reading that email, I thought to myself, this is how, like, when you're looking at the guide on Comcast, this is how <laughs> they write their stuff on Comcast. You're like, okay, it doesn't have to be like, you know, like a, like a really well-written essay, but they're clearly just trolling here. Right. <laughs> you know, like, they don't care. It's like some guy who's like, yeah, I'm going to get fired anyway, so who cares? Um but uh, fortunately, it's not about what they put in their emails. It's about what they put in these boxes. Right. And let's hope it's cool stuff for an affordable price. But yeah, I might jump back into the Loot Crate. You know, I canceled my subscription several years ago. 
We still get Japan Crate, though. Oh, okay. Every month. But that's a little different. It's yeah. Snack food. It's cheap. Yeah, that's, that's different. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of stuff that is cool to buy, so this Friday is Triple yes. Force Friday. And last week, they did the reveal live on the interwebs to show the stuff that's going to be for sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and I erroneously thought Triple Force Friday was last week for that <laughs> very reason. <laughs> that's understandable. Yeah. It's understand. They didn't show everything, but they showed a lot of stuff. So... Um, so Amazon's going to be carrying some exclusives, um, some cool shirt. I like that Mandalorian shirt. Yeah, that's what I was thinking right now, too. That's pretty cool. Um, some nice watches by Citizen. Oh, I want that watch on the left with the Rebel symbol. Those are pretty cool. Um. Never mind. No, I want the Death Star watch. (laughs) That's the one I want. I don't know. I like the, the Boba and the R2. Yeah, but I like I I just like things that are black though. You know, like it it's it's just so cool. So Xbox will have their um Jedi Outcast box and then they'll have a, a controller as well that you can get for it. That's a specific controller, not just a skin for the controller. That's a specific controller. Okay. Yeah. And uh so you can they'll be have exclusives at the theme parks as well. I for one like the new X Wings. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Um, some cool books. So I saw them work on on open this the their uh, their pop up book, the ultimate pop up galaxy. It's actually really cool. I used to love pop up books as a kid. Oh, I was gonna say oh, yeah. maybe it's just because. And my girlfriend reminded me of this last or not two months ago on my birthday. She got me like a, a kid's Batman card, and the first thing she said was, "I know this is a kid's card, but you're really a big kid anyway, so you know, shut up." Um, I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> oh. but since I am still a big kid at heart. And like I'm really like still easily impressed by the like, simple things. I still like to look at pop up books. Well, I mean, I think we all know the reason why you like to to look at pop up books. <laughs> but you know what the worst part of all is? <laughs> I never learned to read. I didn't know where you were gonna go with that actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they they opened uh, some of it, and it's really really cool. So. I would suggest getting that no matter what your age is. Um, the Disney Store obviously will have a lot of ex- exclusive figures, and we've gotten our best look so far at the Knights the of Ren. Yep, exactly. Um, and the Sith Troopers. So you can go, uh, listeners. You can go on StarWars dot com and look for, uh, or just go to Google, look up uh, Star Wars Triple Force Friday products, and we're looking on the Star Wars, the official Star Wars website at the items here. Um, Funko obviously will have some figures. Kind of like, want that Lando. I was gonna yeah. say I, I really dig the Lando. Lando's pretty cool, and of course the Mandalorian one. It's pretty sweet. Yep, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Then that teaser from uh, from Celebration, where he literally draws that big rifle in one hand, that yeah. really big rifle. He's got that in one hand and this yep. blaster in the other one. I thought I've never been the biggest Boba Fett fan because really in the movies Boba Fett doesn't do much. Right. No. In this one teaser, this new guy, I'm in love with this character. This I mean, character is to me what Boba Fett is to everyone else now. You mean Mandalorian? The man. Well, I'm sure he has an actual name, right? Everybody just calls him the, the Mandalorian. Everybody like, just calls him but, Mandalorian. But the Mandalorian is to me what Boba Fett is to everyone else. Yeah. He, like he's the father of the sand snakes. Dude, I oh, that is true. <laughs> yes, but I mean, I just like that one shot. He's got this big rifle, this really long rifle, just in one hand, pointed at stormtroopers, and then like I just like that is just so cool. That is so cool. But well, Fed never did anything like that. All he did was get knocked into the starlight pit by a blind guy. It happens. Yeah. He got out. <laughs> he did. Uh, I also really like the uh, the second sister Inquisitor for a uh, fallen order. The Inquisitors are from Rebels, right? That's where they, they were introduced? That was where they were first introduced. Okay, yeah. yeah. I still, I'm still so far behind. Yes, you are. But with Disney Plus... You can get caught up. Yep. So Garmin, not this one, that's the kids' Fitbit watch. <laughs> they are releasing, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Legacy Saga Series smartwatches. And I've been needing to get a smartwatch. These are pretty sweet. The hands on the watch are lightsaber blades? Yep. But you'll be able to change the face because they're smartwatches. That is awesome. So that that see that these are the ones I want. I want to get one of these. That is awesome. Yep. So they are inspired by Ray and Darth Vader. I think you've heard of them. Nah, it sounds familiar. <laughs> I had someone in the shop earlier today 
Say, oh, I saw the new teaser for uh, for Rise of Skywalker, and I'm like, yeah. And they're like, who's that girl at the end? And I was like, what? Which? There's a new girl at the end of the teaser. I was like, I don't think I saw it. And the only one I can think of is maybe Carrie Russell's character, but I was like, I don't think she was at the end of the teaser. No, that girl. She had the hood, and she had like that 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 red lightsaber, and it flipped open. And everyone in the shop was like, that was Ray. He's like, nah. <laughs> We're like, yeah, buddy. That, that's not even like a rumor or an opinion, man. That's a fact. So how about this figure That's a fact, of Mandalorian? Jack. So there's the long rifle you're talking about. I'm actually not that crazy about this. This is one of the Black Series figures? Uh, I think so. Black Series stuff is really hit or miss for me. Sometimes yeah. they look awesome, and sometimes they just don't like It's Hasbro. Sometimes the sculpts are really cool, and sometimes they're just not that. Or sometimes it's not even just the paint job. The sculpts, sometimes it's the paint job. Like, hold it, like Hasbro tends to get really lazy sometimes with paint jobs. I don't know. So yeah. the next character. That I like a lot better. Yeah, Sorry. again, second sister looks really cool. That looks awesome. The one underneath the second sister. That's not a Jawa, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. That looks cool. That guy. Well, the the dude from Fallen Order, from Fallen Order. Droid looks cool yeah. too. But I mean, like, like so so far in the Black Series figures, the only one I don't like so far is no, the Mandalorian. Her. That rumor has it. Whatever the hell that is is awesome. Part of a love triangle. Gina Carano. There is a Gina Carano action figure now. Yep. That is awesome. That is awesome. Now this this is really cool, Dio. So you know how they had the um, the app controlled yeah. BB-8s. Oh yeah. This one is slightly larger. Okay. Than the the BB-8, which was really tiny. So this one's a bit bigger, and it's it, again, it's just really cool. So I might want to get one of those. I'm always up for new droids. So it's app controlled. That is the droid we're looking for. That is. Yeah. Um, and this one's from the Mandalorian, right? The uh, That's correct. Yeah, the ATST. AT yep. Yeah. And with the Raider. Yeah. See, that's what you want to get. Get a Raider. Yep. So you can put a little jacket on him. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe add some more spikes under there because he doesn't look like he has enough spikes. <laughs> uh, then you have the figures from the, the cartoon uh, series, Star Wars shorts that they have. The uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures. And you know the Kylo Halloween mask. I kind of want that Sith Trooper shirt. Sure. What is that? Uh, this is so. Uh, so they'll have a kit where kids can start learning coding. Oh, that's cool. And so I shouldn't say just kids. Anybody, if you want to learn coding, you can get this. So they'll have they'll have these um, kits hmm. for children six and up, and you're end up. I am end up. That's right. So. And I see Kotobukiya here. I'm getting excited. Yeah, I like Kotobukiya. There you go. So Do little... and BB-8, and of course Lego, literally... which is which has is, just been crushing it in no, you, the recent years. Well, you literally cannot have too many Lego sets. Like, oh, no. It's not possible. Oh no. Um, oh, that Look so at that cool. Kylo ship. That's pretty sweet. So I'm a Lego builder, right? Uh, specifically, my preference is Lego Star Wars vehicles, and the vehicles, not like the set the sets they have. I love the vehicles. The problem is. They're all so expensive. Yeah, they are. They are very pricey. Dude, very, very pricey. Um, but I love to build them. You know, like yeah. I, when I was younger, I was always a big model kit builder. Ooh. And then, I, ironically, as I got older, I moved from model kits to Legos. There's a Mecha good Strux. He man. Castle Grace. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's and it looks 3, awesome. Thirty-five hundred pieces. Mm -hmm. And just, how much I does it cost? This. I don't know. They didn't yeah. say. I just watched the Pixel Dan video. A little too rich for my. Pixel Dan is my favorite YouTuber. <clears throat> Like he's actually the only action figure guy on on YouTube I can I can tolerate. I actually really like him. Yeah. Um, Do you like a Mandalorian lunchbox? I would actually. He can get. I only collect if lunch boxes. Only if there's a thermos. There's a water bottle. It's kind of like not a thermos. The not the same. Well, you'll be able to do these because uh, Zazzle dot com will have these available for you to put on different products. Cool. So. Also, I like the name Zazzle. Zazzle. Some little notebooks and so yeah, so there is plenty of stuff that is out or that will be out this weekend for Triple Force Friday. Yay. So several stores will be having uh midnight openings. Some Targets will, some Walmarts will. Uh I don't know if Disney stores will be doing midnight stuff or not. And then obviously stuff will be available on Amazon, so just but all the stores will have their exclusive items amongst the the the, the mass. I can tell you what store stuff. won't be having a Force Friday opening. 
KB Toys. Well, I was going to say Toys R Us. Well, but yeah. potato, potato. Yeah. <laughs> so that's exciting. Yes. So that'll be fun. We are two months away from Star Wars. So speaking of toys. Yes. So I thought, oh, you were going to say. No. Well, I was going to say, but I, it doesn't matter. I was going to be like, is this oh, Force it, Fridays happening? It matters, buddy. Well, is this Force Fridays happening? Is this Force Fridays happening? When did tickets go on sale for the ri- for Rise of Skywalker? I'm guessing within the next couple of weeks because yeah. it was around usually like the 12th or the 14th during Monday Night Football, Football yeah. that they would release a new trailer, which would be the last trailer. Mm-hmm. And then that's it was at the end of the trailer, tickets on sale now. Yeah. And then the internet would break. Yes. Like on uh, for The Force Awakens. Yes, I remember that. So we'll probably know within the next week or so because they'll be, they'll be really pushing hard that, you know, the Star Wars trailer will be coming out. And it'll probably, I would guess it'd probably be Monday Night Football again. And every time they do that, because um, it's always Monday Night Football. And, like, I know, like, a couple years ago during the college football championships, they had the new Avengers trailer because Disney owns an ESPN on there. So anyway, but every time they do this, I always get somebody commenting, like, like, why do they have to put the Star Wars trailer out during football? Don't they know that like football fans don't like Star Wars? And I go, you clearly have never been to a football game because there's always a Darth Vader or a Boba Fett. And it doesn't matter what team. It used to just be us. It used to just be the Raiders. Now it's a, I see orange and blue Darth Vaders at like Broncos games now. Oh. Yeah. All right. So the uh, the Toy Hall of Fame... Ooh. Did you know there was such a thing? Yes. No. So the Toy Hall of Fame has released their list of those that are vying to be inducted into this year's Toy Hall of Fame. And for some reason, it uh, pulled up what's already there. <laughs> so, da, 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 da. okay. I so. don't think I saw Masters of the Universe, and that is a grand atrocity if that's the case. Well, that's weird. Let's see if their press release has it. Because if there's no He-Man in the Toy Hall of Fame, it is a sham, like the NFL Hall of Fame. <laughs> that's it is. Re- that's how you really feel. Okay. okay, so it looks like the current finalists to go in are My Little Pony, the cell phone, Nerf, <laughs> Matchbox Cars, Mm-hmm. Not Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels is already in there. Yeah. Um, Care Bears. Care Bears. Cell phones. Board games. Risk. Well, not necessarily Risk. It's just board games in general. Oh. Uh, Magic the Gathering. Mm-hmm. The Top. The Little Popcorn Popper. That Little Popcorn Popper. I still like that kind of stuff. Coloring Books. Jenga. How is He Man not already in the Hall of Fame? Ma- and Masters of the Universe. How is it not already? That should have been the very first toy ever inducted into the Whoa. Toy Hall of well, Fame. I, no, well, e- yeah. Hold, hold your horses there, Shira. Slow your roll there. My roll does not slow. Yeah, easy there. Man at arms. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so those are what are now uh, apparently only two from this list. Will be inducted in. It should be both He Man and She Ra. Well, she would be part of Masters of the Universe, dummy. (laughs) Screw the rest of them. (laughs) Um, Okay, no. So, so I mm. okay. So I think maybe we'd all agree that the Masters of the Universe would go in. Yes, it's part of our our childhood. So, what would you say next? The popcorn popper. Popcorn popper. Yeah, I had one. Yeah, Uh, we all. I think we all did. I love that thing. Mm. But it annoys parents all over the world. But board games. Well, but also Care Bears, also, I mean, uh, clearly My Little Pony, um, the Nerf gun. I mean, well, Nerf. Well, just Nerf in general. general. Yeah. I mean, there's a legitimate case for all of this. They're, Except they're, for coloring books. That's not a toy. Well, it's I don't know. It's not really a toy. You're, yeah. It's no, an activity. You're I, not really color, You know, I would agree. It yet. is an activity. So, okay. Um, but Magic the Gathering, that, super popular. I, I think it has a long way to go until it gets into the Toy Hall of Fame. Well, it's also not a toy. It's a game. It's a game, yeah. But neither are board games. That was going to be my next... Yeah, it's it, they're not toys. I mean, technically, can you buy these toy stores? Yeah, but are they toys? Well, I don't know. Toys are something you play with, right? Yeah. Okay, I might have just convinced you myself against my own games. argument. games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's why I think that games do. So I would allow card games and board games. Question. 
Yes. So Jenga doesn't count as a board game. Or no. is that there for board games? No, no, no. Jenga's on its own. Jenga's on its own. Jen- okay. Jen- yeah. Yeah, Jenga's on its own as its own toy slash game. Because it's not a board game, but it is right. a game. Well, you know? Much like in how Uno is not a board game, it's a card game, but it's still a game. So well, I would lump it all together. Are the other what are the other board games that are actually in there? Because I think there are some. I'm sure there are. I would guess Monopoly. Uh, should, yeah, I would guess the Monopoly would be on there. So let's see what do we have. Um. So this is by. I like how Ball and Duck to 2009. Yeah, they had the, to wait till 2000. Yeah, they had to wait till 2000. Yeah, clues <laughs> in there. Yeah, clue. Dungeons and Dragons. I can't. I'm sorry. That's not a. That's not a toy. Um. But again, it's I think game. that I think that falls into the same the thing. The game of life. GI Joe was inducted before before Masters of the Universe. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm sorry, man. I just no no GI Joe Joe's 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 much been, bigger. Yeah, GI Joe has a lengthy history. Masters of the Universe doesn't. Yeah, GI Joe. Started I love back both in the of 60s. them. But when we think of GI Joe, we don't think of the one from the 60s. It doesn't matter we what we think. Of but it doesn't yeah. matter what we think of it. What matters is it's what it their actually entire is. Entire yeah. run and longevity of GI Joe. Is much bigger than Masters. Okay, Masters. let's pause right here. Paper airplane? What? Yeah. Apparently it what? is. What? Puppet. This is a sham. This like, is an absolute I just love, sham. I just love how it's, it's puppet. Or stick. The stick. Okay. Yeah, this is... this is, A stick got in there before Super Masters Super Soaker Universe. got in before Nerf. I, I can get that, though. I mean, I would put a nerf above the Super Soaker, but I, I get that at least. Yeah. I'm, um, some of these, I'm just like, Jesus. No, he's not in here. No. I don't see... I love, I love mon- the cardboard Okay, yeah, so box. there, there, are, oh, there's, several, there's Monopoly. there okay, are Monopoly. several games yeah. in there. Yeah. So then why are just board games now just one in category? How is Nintendo just the Game Boy? <laughs> not the NES. Yeah, yeah the NES is much NES bigger than the Game Boy. The yeah. Super NES. Yeah. It's a Game Boy. Okay. That's what I'm saying. This is a sham. This is an absolute sham. Radio flyer wagon, toy or not? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That was around for a long time. I know, I know, but like, it'd be considered a toy, toy. just just like a bicycle would be considered a toy as well. I don't know if I consider a bicycle a toy. It doesn't matter what you what you can no, I what know, you consider it as. What really what matters is what it's classified as. It's classified yeah. as a toy. Fact, yeah. Okay. So I'm fact, seeing on I'm list? seeing so many <laughs> individual board games. So then, why is now board games itself just a it's, it's I think it's risk. Maybe it is then. Just, it's risk. Probably just yeah. risk. Okay. So well, let's. So then we will get rid of risk. So I I say no risk. Um. So I say Masters the of the Universe. universe and I I'm torn between My Little Pony and Care Bear. No, I got to go with the, the Popper. No, no, I prefer the Popper. What I think is going to happen is either My Little Pony yeah. or Care Bear. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. That's my prediction. Oh, my, well, my two picks would be Masters and Risk, but what I think actually happens is going to be Masters and, and, and My Little Pony. Follow, I don't know, followed I, by a, a close third would be Care Bears. A nerf should definitely be there, too. I, I, <clears throat> nah, nerf. Why only two? This, this is why. This, this Toy Hall of Fame sucks. Why only two? That's absurd. No, not necessarily. I mean, think of it. I mean, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Even though they have a bunch of nominations, different groups, they only nominate a certain number every year. Yeah, this isn't football where they yeah. put a dozen people in. Well, even then, there's still a bunch of people that deserve to be in the NFL Hall of Fame that aren't in the Hall of Fame because that's true. Because that's just the way it works. But they'll get but, in eventually because of how many people they put in every year. Yeah, not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily. You'll just have to wait a, a lot of people. Longer. A lot of people get overlooked continuously. Yeah. Or they're nominated one year and then just, not nominated just again his, the following year. Mainly his team, but <laughs> well, to be fair, the only ones I'm complaining about are the Raiders. Yeah. But uh, but uh, Roger Craig. Well, see, there you go. There's yeah. another one. First right? thousand thousand. But yeah, no, I I agree. You know, only a couple a year. I don't. Well, I like baseball where you got to meet a certain meet a certain standard. If you want to get in. You just want a participation trophy, is what yeah. you want. No, yeah, no, because like everybody deserves to get in. Not, not everyone, because I, I don't really ones, think especially like my should, team. All the ones should get in there. They like here, you well, get it. Well, no, because coloring books isn't a toy. That shouldn't be in there at all. Um, but legitimately, I'm looking at He Man should be in there. The popcorn popper should be in there. The Matchbox car should be in there. I mean, even My Little Pony should be in there, See, and Care should be in there, and I, so I should Nerf. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, and I agree that those yeah. things should be in there. But again, only two can this year. It's a vacuum popper, by the way. 
I never knew its actual name. I just know I it's loved it. It's supposed to be a vacuum, not an actual. Oh, that's true. Yeah, popcorn yeah. popper. No, I, but that's just like one of the colloquial names that people gave it, you know. Um, I just know I loved it. Yeah. It I made would, awesome noises I personally and it was would colorful. Go with, I, I'd go with the popper and Masters of the Universe. So now you can only choose two. So what two? Well, don't, don't give me any. And also, and maybe I want two. Okay, so just, just so I'm not giving the exact same answer, I'm going to say... Well, I gave my prediction no, what I think is going to happen. Go, you already mean, go, did that. It's okay if it's the same, but what, what are your what are your choices? Well, now I'm going to say He-Man and Nerf. Okay. Yeah. Good selections. Yes. And how about you? They're He-Man. all good selections as long He-Man as you're not but... He-Man and Risk. All right. There we go. Yeah. Good choices. All right. Are you is, done? No. Is, is, go back world to the world. actual like game in, of world in, in in duck, Is Ninja Turtles on there? I'm just curious. Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay, uh, you master, they brought that stuff back, right? Uh, they're starting to come back, right? Yeah. yeah, I need to get me a view master. Yeah, I love view master. I did too. Teddy Ruxpin's came back. Yeah, yeah and bit. they even have like a. Oh, well, they're still. That's I, just because they're possessed. It. Um, that's how they came back. <laughs> well, they even have like a like a mini Teddy Ruxpin, like a Teddy Ruxpin light that's like significantly oh, cheaper, but it's not quite the same. All right. Well, since you guys are having fun with this, I'm gonna. We're going to play a little game here. Yes. Okay. Alf. All right. I'm going to turn off the TV, though, so you can't see. All right. All right. So let's turn off the screen behind me there. So you and for the record, it. I can't see anything okay. at all. I'm completely blind. Ah. Yeah. All right. So we are going to use the, the website ranker.com, which has tons of lists. Okay. Now, the, for this, the public gets to vote on these lists. They always put up different topics. Right. I think some people can submit topics. And then they get thousands of people that just can go on their site and vote on these different topics. So this is the list according to Ranker.com. I want you guys to try and guess what's in the top ten. So this is kind of like Family Feud. We have to guess what these these people pick. Correct. Okay. Now you don't. I'm not going to make you guess like what's number one, what's number two. Just see if you can guess within the top ten according to Ranker.com. Okay. The greatest animated series ever made. Flintstones has to be hold, on hold on. Let me start. <laughs> Dear Lord. <sighs> so if we were to go on a game show, we couldn't have him on. There's a reason why we can't have nice things, Nicholas. Jeez. Well, to be fair, this is why on game shows they have buzzers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, to be fair. This Thank why God ga- this is in jeopardy. Yeah, say, to be fair on game shows, this is us. also why they have <laughs> losers. <laughs> Okay. Uh, All right. So I'm going to throw it to you first. <laughs> Please take his answer. Please take his answer. Say, say Flintstones. Say Flintstones. No, don't, no, now he's asking you to. Don't do Flintstones. <laughs> so okay, so see if you can top guess what, 10 the, animated series. If you can, animated series of all time. So this, because they actually had lists for like 70s, 80s, 90s. Right, right. So this is of all time, according to Ranker.com, for people to vote on them. Okay. So what do you think is in the top 10? Also, good to show what I think of when I think oh, of at cartoons, right? Like That was Jesus my first quick Christ. answer. Swear to God. <laughs> Guys, we get a little psychological insight to old Nick Psychological. Here. I'm just going to give him some start throwing at <laughs> okay, you throughout okay, the show. Okay. Dear Lord. <laughs> well, I think Hanna-Barbera is probably... I'm going to go with Scooby-Doo. Oh, yep. that's a very good guess. Number five. Oh, wow. Scooby Doo right. is number five. One of my personal faves. Nick. The Simpsons. Number two. Simpsons is number two. What the hell? G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Didn't make the top Is 10. not in the top ten. Wow. South Park. I was looking for G.I. to see where, where it fell. You said South Park? Mm-hmm. Not in the top ten. Wow, okay. Well, then we'd have Flintstones, of course. Mm-hmm. It'd have to be in there. It has to be in the top ten. Number eight. Yep, you knew it. Followed by... The Jetsons? Yeah. Jetsons in there? I wouldn't think it's as popular as the Flintstones. Really? I mean, I... You had a whole ton of crossover. No, I know, but... <laughs> I don't think other hey, people George would Shetson. think they are not in the top ten. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, do so I that's, that's like one A one B right there's, there. There's there's some interesting um, interesting ones that are for the in the top ten. Batman the animated series. 
number seven. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think of something later. See, that's the hard part when guessing this because you got to like try to figure out what would the people that would do this think of. Well, I'm trying to think of some Hanna Barbera stuff, but they always did like one season of something. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Scooby Doo was really like the big one too. Yeah. Like, like I was thinking, in my head Flintstones for sure, Scooby Doo for yeah. sure. Um, By the way, the, uh, the Jetsons was number twenty three. Yeah. Oh wow! Um, Didn't think it would drop that far. I thought for sure South Park would have been in the top ten. I mean, just because you got to figure the people who would like, who would like, you know, like give their answers and vote for this kind of stuff. I'm thinking like probably stuff that's like still kind of like recent in people's minds and still yeah. relevant, and South Park's still on, but. Popularity. I'm also trying to like put it into what I'm trying to like make you know my guesses and, here. And and I'm not seeing GI Joe anywhere. Oh, there it is, number eighty. You're kidding me. Yeah, GI Joe is number eighty. Oh, that's way to this list. Wow. that's way too low. According to this list is number eighty. Like I'd put it top twenty five easily, but yeah. Um. Wow. Johnny Quest. <laughs> See, that was something that I kept thinking about, but I started thinking I don't know. Well, How many people nowadays would say that? I love yeah, Johnny Quest. Yeah, but this, this yeah. is just a random... Yeah. Number one. No, I'm just kidding. It's not <laughs> number one. <laughs> what the? You had me there for a second. <laughs> I was like, no Yo, way! What? <laughs> no, it is not. I was going to say, you're out of your gut, uh, It's not in the top ten. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number 13. Ooh, that's close. Number 13. That's, that's close. close. Mm. I'm okay with that numbering. Yeah. Yeah. Quick draw McGraw. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of. Um, I don't know. Which one was number two? Was it Flintstones or Simpsons? Simpsons. Simpsons was number so two. So Simpsons is number two. I'm trying to think. What's number was one? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm trying to think. What? If, yeah, yeah, Flintstones is number eight, and Simpsons is number two. What's number if you, one? If you don't guess it, if I were to tell you what number one is, you'd, you'd, I think everybody would agree on it. Okay. Personally. Oh, really? Um. I'm not seeing South Park on here. Wait, is it whose turn is it? No, I kind of got lost in the conversation. Uh, family. I was thinking that, but I don't think it'd be in the top ten. I mean, I, I don't know. It's kind of a wild card. You said, guess you for said me. Family Guy. Family Guy, number ten. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, that would be. Wild. I thought it was worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. If number one is Cleveland Show, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> 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 um. I have a question, just yeah. to help me sure. narrow down decisions. In the top ten, is it all American cartoons? Um, Pink Panther. <laughs> Specifically, no. is there any Japanese cartoons in the top ten? Yes. Okay, I believe this is a Japanese. All right, so you said Pink Panther, oh, said right? Pink okay. Panther. Yes, I, I did a search, and South Park didn't even tr- crack the top 100. Wow. That surprises me. That, that really surprises me. That really me. surprises me. See, people suck. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, but anyway, um, but Pink Panther, is that anywhere on there? I didn't see it on okay. here. Uh, Pokemon. It is not. That was going to be my... Either that or Dragon Ball was going to be my guess for a Japanese cartoon. Mm-mm. A nice throwing in another guess. Well, I I figured if if, if Pokemon <laughs> wasn't on there, neither was Dragon Ball. So That's I why again, that like I said, it, 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 sneak it in here. Yeah. It's it's it surprised me to see yeah. this one on here. Okay, Looney, Looney this, this high on there at all? Number one. Yeah. Oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. Looney Tunes. Duh. Well, because I'm thinking. I mean, it's not really a series, but it's a yeah. lot of animation. Yeah. yeah, I think that's why I wasn't thinking it. Um. But if either of you had guessed, like, you know, Bugs Bunny Money. or anything, I would have yeah. given yeah. you Looney Tunes. Judge, judges would have accepted it. Mary Melody. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you, want, do you want to keep guessing or do oh, you want me to finish out the top 10? Um, Animaniacs? No. I don't think it's in the top 10. Number 14. Ooh, that's, that's Number close. Number 14. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Hell, the E Man even crocked the top 20? Masters? It better have. <laughs> I can't. <clears throat> Let's see. Because I'm thinking eight. There's, if it's such, not in there's the top so many 20. 80s cartoons. It's yeah. not in the top 20. 
I have lost wow. all faith in humanity. No. Everyone who voted on this should be ashamed of themselves. You are terrible people. <laughs> How do you live with yourselves? Pretty well, actually. Um, so what about Thundercats? If, if, yeah, yeah, I know if he meant his, no but though. I'm still yeah. curious now. Okay. Not in the top ten. Um, X-Men, the animated series? I thought about that, but I didn't think it would be top ten. No. Yeah. So, okay, let me just say the ones that you have guessed so far in the top ten. Uh, so you've guessed number 10, Family Guy. Right. Number 8, The Flintstones. Right. Number 7, Batman, the animated series. Right. Number 5, Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Number 2, The Simpsons. Yeah. And number 1, Looney Tunes. What about Rugrats? Ooh. Yeah, maybe. I just realized we haven't guessed anything Nickelodeon yeah. yet. Sorry, I almost had a sneeze there. Uh, number 21. Hmm. Yeah, this is getting harder. Hmm. I need the Jeopardy theme. Bing, 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 bing. Well, don't do it. I'm just saying I need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's probably people listening, screaming out like ideas and like that we can't hear. And then I go, like, you're well, an the, idiot for not guessing this. Well, they will when this is posted. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, because they'll all look it up. Well, go yeah. to Ranker.com. <laughs> what a bunch of losers. <laughs> hmm. While he's thinking, I'm just curious. In the, is it 100? Yes. Is Bobby's World anywhere in the top 100? Oh, I'm just yeah. curious. I love that cartoon. I don't think it would be in the top 100, but I love that cartoon. I like that one, too. Yeah. Let's see. But I am starting to run out of ideas myself. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can hit you with a ton of 80s stuff, but it's not going to be in the top 10. Yeah, if He-Man wasn't in the top 10, then there's no way none of that. There's yeah. stuff that we loved. He-Man was number 73. <sighs> and G.I. Joe was 80? Yeah, that's a, these, you, yeah, these people should be ashamed of themselves. They suck. I do not see uh, Bobby's World. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think so. If He-Man's 73, that's... Laugh Olympics. <laughs> no, but good guess. If Thunder the Barbarian is higher than he yeah, may have to be really yeah, mad. <laughs> Captain Caveman. Well, I love me some Captain Caveman. What about Kong Kung Fu? Fu <laughs> <laughs> Quick John McGraw. Grape Ape. All right, let's try one more round. Okay. Um, Otherwise, we'll go all night on this yeah, stuff. Yeah, okay. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Good one. Good one. Not on here. Okay. Not on the top ten. And then I'll read back the top 20. Okay. Is what Care I'll do. Bears? <laughs> no. All right. I think we're ready to hear. You're ready to go? Yeah. Okay. So let's, yeah. go for, let's go from number 20 and up. Number 20, Pokemon. Number 19, Dragon Ball Z. Mm. Oh, cool. I didn't think Dragon Ball would be higher than Pokemon. Number, but yeah, number 18, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Oh, yeah. Uh, number 17, DuckTales. woo mm. Number 16, The Bugs Bunny Show. Mm. Remember, that was different mm -hmm. from... Yeah. yeah. Number 15, Pinky and the Brain. Nice. Number, yeah. I love Pinky and the Brain. number 14, Animaniacs. Number 13, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number 12, Justice League. Mm. Number 11, Rick and Morty. Cool. Oh, now we're getting into the, the good stuff. Number 10, 10, Family Guy. Number 9, SpongeBob SquarePants. Mm. Number eight, The Flintstones. Number seven, Batman the Animated Series. Number six, Futurama. Mm. Number five, Scooby Doo. Number four, Avatar The Last Airbender. Really? Yeah, see, that's what surprised me. Wow. Yeah. That's how you know it's a bunch of millennials. And then the last one that you didn't get, number three, Tom and Jerry. Oh. Yeah. Over Flintstones. With though? number two, The yeah. Simpsons, and number one, Looney Tunes. I was thinking Woody Woodpecker. Oh, yeah. 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 Heckle and Jekyll. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yeah. So, again, that's according to Ranker.com. That is the top 20. They have the top 100 listed here, but again, we're not going to go through the whole thing because it's a long list. What are some of the other ones you mentioned? You said X Men. That was number yeah. 28. 
Um, Pink Panther was number 32. Mm. Uh, let's see. Maybe the Hanna hand Barbera stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a ton of it. Um, let's see. Who did Yogi Bear? Was that Hanna Barbera? Yeah, yeah that's, that's number 38. Forgot about him. Uh, hey, yeah. boo. More. Uh, more to me. Nobody listed Inspector Gadget. That's number forty. Yeah. Well, see, that was an '80s cartoon. I knew yeah. it wasn't going to be in the top ten. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's higher than it's higher than He Man and GI Joe. Yeah. Next week, I will come up with a list of my top ten oh, animated geez. cartoons of all How time. No. Uh, you said Thundercats. Thundercats was number sixty. Nobody guessed Darkwing Duck. That was number sixty-one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Alvin and Chipmunks is on here, number 69. Yeah, they're way off. Millennials, man. These are all millennials. He-Man, the Masters Universe, number 73. Pink Panther, number 77. G.I. Joe, number 80. Well, that was only once. I didn't list it before. You said 30-something was Pink Panther, I thought. Uh Uh-uh. 34 or something like that? Oh, so there are two Pink Panthers. So yeah, there's one at 32. Oh, the Pink Panther show. I think that was the revival. Oh, well, kind of like how there was two Johnny Quests. Well, they well they did yeah. so many shorts throughout like, yeah. the 60s yeah. and 70s. Yes, and then, then another one for 77. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Johnny Quest was number 91. <laughs> I think it's a little too low. I wasn't expecting it to be like high, high, but no, 91 I'm, is too low. And, and Huckleberry Hound was number 99. There you go. All right. What was 100, just for the hell of it? Uh, 100, it was Arthur. Never even seen Arthur. PBS. Uh, people talk about it a lot. I've never seen it. I just know the, the meme. As long as it wasn't Caillou. Or the two <laughs> memes, I should say. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, at least this list made everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people should be ashamed oh, of themselves Alright, I'll pick another list for our next episode To go through to, to enrage you even more Shame. Oh, speaking of our next episode Hindsight yes. Theater Hindsight Hind- Theater So we are bringing back Hindsight Theater So yes. for those of you that may be new listeners What we've done previously In Hindsight Theater Is we pick a movie that we have not seen For a long time, quite often Since our childhood And we rewatch them to see whether or not the movie holds up so this is not like watching, you know, it's not going to be a deep dive mm-hmm. like we did last week. Um, but this is, we kind of review the movie again to see if it lives up to our childhood memory of it. So, Nick, you brought up a movie earlier this evening that I said I haven't seen for a long time, probably since it came out. And what is your choice for Hindsight Theater? Well, I think we both brought it yeah. up. Oh, it that's was, true. Uh, Robin, I'm sorry, you both brought it up. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yes. Starring? Kevin Costner. Oh, boy. And oh, yeah. Alan Rickman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Alan Rickman. Yeah. So, uh, and so, I think we should also include the music video. You know, I think we will. The real music video. Yeah. Brian Adams. As, as we yeah. will discuss. Yeah. Next week. Next week. Um, and, you know, speaking of this, October will be a perfect time. It's clearly, you know, maybe not next week, maybe, but to bring back Nick's Video Vault, too. Oh, yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah. So maybe the following episode. Will be, so we'll do Hindsight Theater, Theater next episode and the episode after that to give you a little bit of time. You'll Nick's do Video Nick's Vault. Video Vault. Yeah. Wonderful. But it's not my Video Vault. <laughs> Maybe we can re- rename it Hash Brown Nick's Video Vault. Oh, which means I need to change all the settings on here because we haven't used it for a while to give you your, your echo chamber for Nick's Video Vault. Uh-oh. Okay, we'll figure, we'll figure it all out. But yeah. I think, hopefully, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> so if you would like to, to play along, um, watch Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, if you can. I'm sure you can probably find it on demand somewhere. I think it's like streaming for or free your on parents, sites. Or your parents probably own it on VHS if you still have a VCR. For show. For show. And to be honest, it's probably like on YouTube. I, I think I saw them like on Vudu or like Tubi or something like that. Yeah, like it's out see, there so yeah, you'll free, be able yeah. to find it. So again, watch it, and then next week, like I said, Hindsight Theater, we will we will decide whether or not it lives up to our memory. I have a feeling it probably won't, um, but that'll be our our selection for Hindsight Theater. Just remember, folks, everything I do, I do it for you. <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> everything. Everything you do, everything. I love that song, and like P 
people really hate that song. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it more. <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about the year that was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yep. All right. Uh, so don't forget to, uh, to find us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, obviously, because you've found it already if you're listening. But if you have another app you'd like to switch over to, please do that. You can find us on Apple iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher. You can find us on Podbean. And now you can find us on iHeartRadio. If you don't have any of those, please download them for free in your app store. And then don't forget, on Saturday, October the 12th, I will be making an appearance at Los Angeles Comic-Con. Uh, look in the program for the happiest panel on Earth. It'll be happening at 12 noon in room 308AB. And I hope to see you folks there. Um, uh, find us on the social medias at oh My Geek Podcast on everything you can think of. Email us at show at ohmgeekshow.com. Don't forget to leave us a five-star rating, leave a comment, let us know what you think about the show, or maybe give a suggestion for Hindsight Theater. Yeah. I am definitely open to suggestion. Fantastic. Yep. In more ways than one. Wonderful. Well, I think that's it for this episode, <laughs> everybody. So on behalf of myself, this is Jesse. This is Nick. This is Nick. And we will see you, see you kitties later. Bye, everybody. Bye. I've just decided to switch our Friday schedule to Monday, which means that the test we take each Friday on what we learn during the week will now take place on Monday before we've learned it. But since the day is Tuesday, it doesn't matter in the slightest. Pencils ready.